Hello and welcome to another Warcraft V audio commentary. Today we're going to get into game two of the best of three series between Kinchin, spawning it as the red human in the lower left. The map is Secret Valley, going to be going up against DKH.Pain, spawning it as the yellow undead in the upper right. The map is Secret Valley. This is game two of the best of three series for Fit for Gaming Team League between the two players. Uh, if you miss game one, you can always check it out right there. And I don't know if that annotation is actually still up. It's there for the first 15 seconds of the video, so probably not by now. But whatever. Uh, if you did miss it, you can always click there. Or you can wait till the end of this game, and it'll be there. There will be another annotation link up here. Uh, but yeah. So there you go. We do have Pain. He's going with, it looks like a fairly standard Ted Fiends build this game. Uh, just going Death Knight first. And let's see Archmage coming in as the first hero for Kinchin. Slightly different than... Uh, it's slightly different than the last game. Last game we saw the Paladin hero as the first hero for Kinchin. I could not remember his name for some reason. I was like, what's his name? But yeah, it's Paladin hero, and this time it's going to be the Archmage first. So there you go. A little bit of difference. Other than that, it's a pretty standard build, and both players playing pretty standard early games. We'll go ahead and see Payne just picking out that Death Knight. Going to pick up Rod of Necromancy and immediately run over to uh, this side of the map to try to stop. Well, not really try to stop uh, this creep because you can't really get here in time. But what you can do is get here in time to actually go for some peasants perhaps as they're running back to the base. You're going to see a Scout Footman running into Payne's base. And Payne forgot or didn't one of the two. Uh, get an Ruby and Tower up just in time. It looks like that one's actually going to be a perfectly fine timing. I'm not sure why I said the word forgot. Uh, never mind that word. But uh, yeah, he's going to go ahead and get that... Nerubian Tower being constructed right now, and that's going to force this footman away. Of course, a couple of hits from that goal didn't hurt either. And now you can see down here, Payne going to pick up Rod of Necromancy, two charges of Skeleton Warriors, and just going to go ahead and try to get some kills on these Militia. That's going to go down. Just need to get those Militia 100 HP or lower to coil them. And so that's all you really have to do. Um, alternatively, you can just right-click on them like this with these two Warriors. Skeleton Warriors and just try to go for kills that way. You're gonna see a quill killing that skeleton, that uh, militia, and indeed we're gonna see that the Death Knight's gonna run away as well as the Skeleton Warrior trying to get away from that Arcane Tower. You can see that the Archmage is just pretty much doing as much damage to this Death Knight as possible. You can see that Death Knight already down to half HP roughly, and that's not really a great idea. Uh, you want to keep your Death Knight as high as possible, mainly so that you can do a lot of damage during the exp expo attempt that the human players tend to do. It looks like we're going to see that expo attempt coming in right now Players from Kinchin. Uh, as you can see, he's running up here. I'm going to go ahead and see Payne running his Death Knight up here. Uh, just going to go ahead and try to heal up at this fountain just a little bit. You're going to see one footman chasing him, and that's just going to be Kinchin being annoying. It doesn't really do anything, but it does kind of affect the psyche a bit. Uh, and it does let it does give Kinchin a little bit of information, but both players pretty much knew this was going to happen right here, this expansion. So we can see this coming down here. We're going to see one of those creeps getting stolen right off the bat by Payne. Uh, that poor show Berserker. We're going to go ahead and pick up the Gauntlets of Strength plus 3 as well. You're going to see a Pendant of Energy is on the map. Probably going to have to make sure that the Archmage gets that. Indeed, that's going to happen, and Payne almost getting surrounded right there, not quite surrounded, but, you know, blocked into that area, and that would have been forcing him to probably TP out, so nice that he did not get surrounded, a little bit unfortunate by Kinchin to not go ahead and take full advantage of that, but we will see a footman probably going down right here as well, uh, one coil indeed, there it goes, and there's a fiend that's going to be forced to run away, there's a footman pretty much just sitting there chasing it, forcing it out of the fight, and yeah, that's going to be pretty good for Kinchin. Getting this expansion up, minimal harass, really. And uh, now you can see that the pain's going to be forced to run off. At this point, not really. This is a little bit too early, that you, for considering from the standard. Standardly, uh, pain would actually still be doing some harass right now at that expansion. But instead, he's been forced to actually go ahead and try to chase down some of these army units. And then he's going to go ahead and try to creep up a little bit. And most likely, I would assume, uh, once he gets to the tier two, you know, get that lich out and, you know, a couple more fiends and then, you know, come back to the expansion, and try to do some more damage. But this may play out a little bit different. As you can see, Payne is definitely not, you know, doing a great job. Um, well, I'm not, not to say, not to insult him, but he's not doing like the uh, kind of job you want to see in this sort of situation as an undead player. Normally, you want to, you know, not take this much damage on your death knight. As you can see, it's down to 100 life. Um, 
and, the, and these fiends aren't doing too well either. Of course, there are two fountains of health on this map, so we're going to see one of these death knights going to just come over here and try to heal up at that fountain of health. It's going to have to share it with a footman, though, and that's going to require a little bit of micro, perhaps, from the death knight to run around, because uh, you don't really want to waste your HP uh, just by taking some damage from that footman. He probably just stiff clicks a few times around that fountain. Micro's back to his base, and he is now tier 2, so as you can see, he's just going to go ahead and get that burrow upgrade researching. Um, probably here going to see that lich coming out here in just a minute, once it gets to about 425 gold. Probably going to see it. Uh, we're just going to see them trying to go for some crypt fiends here as well. That Archmage is currently only level 2 though, so we're going to probably see a fiend die right now. It's a little bit unfortunate for pain losing a fiend like that, but that's life. We're going to see that Death Knight now coming back into his base. He has gone ahead and had plenty of time to heal up. These ghouls are going to be used just a little bit. Uh, they're going to run back over here, and now I'm surely we'll see the lich. No, no, lich. Yeah, we might be seeing a naga then uh, coming in from pain because he's definitely delaying his second hero for some reason out of the altar. But we will go ahead and see that Kinchin is going to kill one of those gnolls, just going to pick up a little bit more experience. As you can see, he's getting pretty close to level three now. He's at 467 out of 500 experience. We'll probably see him picking up Boots of Speed as well at the shop, maybe even a staff. We're gonna sell the Ring of Protection plus three. Picking up Boots of Speed and Dust. Dust, very important versus Fiends. Uh, fiends can provide a Burrow, which makes them go invisible, and they actually start to get a lot of HP regenerated. I believe it's like seven or eight HP a second, so it's quite good. Uh, so you definitely wanna go ahead and try to kill them if you can. And of course, we're gonna see it looks like the Lich is gonna come out. Uh, Slaughterhouse as well. At this expansion, there's currently only an Arcane Tower up. Uh, let's go ahead and see Kinchin, this water elemental right here. It's going to take some damage. Probably going to see that water elemental dying. That's what I'm talking about with that Burrowed Fiend right there. As you can see, its HP goes up pretty quickly. That's between, of course, uh, the Unholy Aura and the the Burrow. But uh, now we can see that the pain is going to be forced to run one of these Crypt Fiends away. The militia are being forced to, or militia have been called. They are running into this fight. And without a Lich, you can't really do a lot versus that. With a Lich, you can, of course, provide either Frost Armor. Uh, which isn't really the standard. Normally you just see though the Frost Nova, and Frost Nova provides a nice AoE when all those militia get clumped up, and you can just do a lot of damage that way. Uh, whenever they do that and kind of force yourself into a good spot. And also Frost Nova provides a slow, which allows you to do more damage with your fiends uh, and get yourself kiting into a better position. So, but anyway, we'll see that that Lich has come out now. And of course, Kinchin over here does go ahead and start building this blacksmith. He does have a guard tower on the way, and there's an arcane tower. And those two towers are currently being blocked by this two units right here, this vault as well as that blacksmith so that's kind of pretty well protected but uh if there's enough fiends there then it's not really going to matter too much you're going to need more towers or something uh potentially you might just see that sort of situation where um the, un the human player kind of backs off lets the undead player kill the towers and then he runs in with militia or something plus his army and that actually goes ahead and forces the undead player to back off he re rebuilds towers and he keeps doing that uh you know human players who keep doing that allows him to buy a lot of time in the game and the more time you buy then the longer the game goes and generally whenever you have an expansion and your opponent doesn't then the longer the game goes generally the better or more into your favor it is Go ahead and see a little bit of damage going off into the Archmage. The Archmage still isn't level 3. You're going to see this Water Elemental going down as well this time. Of course, he only has 525 HP at level 1. So it's pretty easy to kill. It does give, you know, I think 42, 43 experience. Something like that. I think it's 42. And um, now I can see these footmen are defended. Just going ahead and there's a statue on the field. These fiends are trying to, or these footmen are trying to kill these two fiends right here. Probably going to go ahead and see these fiends staying alive though. Yeah, I'm going to see a Frost Nova on the footmen. Uh, Quill on one of the fiends and just some basic micro and these footmen should go down. And of course, Kinchin now uh, going to go ahead and start throwing down some Arcane Sanctums. He needs to get those Spellbreakers out. Because uh, with Spellbreakers, that does allow you to uh, start trying to fight this again. And you can't really fight this with Footman. And it's just not going to be enough, as we just saw. They just kind of get outkited and such. But over here, we will see that these f uh, fiends are making a push onto this guard tower with five or six six fiends right here. You can see that guard tower going down. There are also some skeleton warriors right here doing some damage. And now we're going to see the arcane tower going down as well. Uh, Kinchin trying to repair, but not going to be quite enough. We will go ahead and see a level 2 water elemental being summoned. It looks like... I'm not sure that's a level 2. It kind of looks like a level 1 uh, water elemental, actually. But the Archmage is level 3 now. And indeed, we're going to see that water elemental will die. That's going to pick up level 2 for the Lich. We're going to see the Mountain King in the back uh, coming in with some militia back here. Five militia. Not going to really be a lot just on their own, though. Uh, five militia and two heroes, and not really going to be very impressive. Not going to see any water elemental is going to be coming in just yet because it's going to wait a little bit longer for the mana. It has to get up to 125. 
You're going to see a bolt on this fiend right here. The death knight is currently out of mana. So we might see this crit fiend going down. He might go ahead and try to burrow, but no, not going to happen. Uh, there's your level 2 water elemental now at 675 HP and 31 to 39 damage. Quite more beefy, but it's also going to go down. And I'm going to see Kinshin now teeping out, trying to keep that mountain king alive. And indeed, he's going to make it out just in time because there was enough mana for a Nova coming in from that frost mate, uh, from that lich. And we're going to see these uh, this one peasant gonna go, that's remaining probably going to die as well. And then probably going to see the town hall going down. So a nice move for pain so far. And we will see down here that the Mountain King and the Archmage is going to see the Mountain King ha having boots passed to him. And probably going to see them creeping out to Ceiling Fountain over here. That would be a really good idea because the Mountain King is low on life and he does need to go ahead and heal up. And... It's a fair amount of experience that you can get, and two, you do get two items, so honestly, this is a pretty good spot. Uh, of course, to creep this effectively, what you do is you move the Red Drake out of Healing Fountain range, then you move your Archmage into Healing Fountain range, you summon a thing, uh, and you just go for the kill, and that's what we're going to see right here happen. Pretty standard stuff. We will see a bunch of Skeleton Warriors coming down here trying to scout. Uh, they will provide a little bit of vision and allow him to see that our Spellbreaker is, Spellbreaker is running over this way, which pretty much tells him, ah, uh, Pain's creeping the Fountain most likely, and not gonna have to worry too much about seeing this expansion just yet but that is a possible something you can take as a human player and yes indeed he's not going to check up there you already saw the spellbreaker is running over here he's just going to run this way and indeed he might be able to steal this item uh we'll see if he can we're going to see pain trying to and let's see i think he was able to steal the experience but i don't don't know couldn't really tell but anyway um Either way, we can see there's a lot of fiends. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven fiends right there, two statues. And if we look, we can see Pain is now beginning that tier three tech. He actually did a delayed tier three uh, push against that expansion. I probably should have mentioned that, I didn't quite catch it, but I kind of figured that's what he would be doing when you have that many fiends. That's generally what you are doing. And then what's your goal? Really, your goal with that sort of strategy is you know, to do enough damage at tier two to force the human player to take heavy, heavy losses not have an efficient expansion going up, you know, to spend thousands of gold on towers or units or peasants or something like that. Uh, you know, and the units that the, the undead player or the human player doesn't really want. They don't really want spellbreakers. Spellbreakers are a good unit, but they don't really want spellbreakers. What they're generally going for is knights and flying machines. And in this case, it looks like we might actually see the lich getting a little bit of trouble here. Perhaps, maybe, as these militia are coming in here, you're going to see a bolt onto that lich right there, but it looks like he's actually managed to get into a comfortable position into the back of his army. And indeed, we're just going to and see a lot of these peasants or these militia or peasants, whichever they are, uh, going down right now. Is there dust on the human player? No dust, so those burrows are going to actually work pretty well for pain. Uh, just gonna go ahead and see that burrow as we come in and seeing lich uh, pain TP out on the lich. So there you go. And hmm, now you can see that uh, we have the human player army just trying to, you know, you want to fight, and there you go. We're going to see some. Peasants running back to the main base. We're going to come back over here, get some more wood for Kenshin. Kenshin's not really hurting for resources. He was banking for a very long time. Even you know, even though he was forced to go ahead and make spellbreakers and he was forced to lose his expansion, he's still done a reasonably good job. He's not out of the game just yet. We will see pain at 4,500 gold at the main. Of course, uh, Kenshin also at 4,500 gold. And we'll go ahead and see pain picking or Kenshin picking up almost level three on this Mountain King. So getting fairly close there. Uh, he could definitely have. He has time to go ahead and pick that up. Uh, for level 3 on the Mount King if he wants to. As you can see, he's very, very close at 477 XP out of 500. Um, and of course, we have the Archmage right here, already level 3. We'll see Dark Ranger being picked up as the third hero for Pain. And if we look at Pain's heroes, we'll see level 4 on the li or on the Death Knight, level 3 on the Lich. So not too far behind Kinshin uh, in hero level, or, well, not too far ahead of Kinshin in hero levels. But we'll go ahead and see the Mount King being forced to pop an Invo Potion at 10 HP. Uh, we will see as well this fight as it goes underway. One of these Spellbreakers immediately going to go down. Uh, the Mountain King is a bit of trouble here, as is that potion of lesser invulnerability wears off. He did pop a healing scroll, having a potion of healing being passed to him, and pa you popping that as well. But uh, there isn't a town portal for Kinchin, so Kinchin's not in a good spot here. He could potentially lose his Archmage, and indeed it looks like it's going to go down, and down it goes. And the Mount King also too low to really do anything in this fight. Uh, really, he just needs to back away, run away. He has taken a pretty heavy loss though right now and if he loses this Mount King as well then he's in some serious trouble he hasn't even picked up level 3 on that Mount King yet of course that's not a bad idea if you're gonna lose it you know but uh, indeed it looks like that's gonna go down you can see him trying to go 
go for the Death Knight. The Death Knight is actually going to go invisible, and Kinchin calls good game. So there you have it. That's game two. If you missed game one, click right there. Uh, and if you'd like to check out game three, the tiebreaker game, the game that decides who wins the series, just click right here. That's game three. And hopefully, we'll see you there.